Hello there people of YouTube land, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter and in this video we're going to be taking a look at another German filter. This one is the Tunzi Comline Filter 3162, suitable for fresh or marine use. Now this is one of two filters that have been sent to me by a guy called Andrew and they're both to be used for marine use. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at a new sort of filter media, well, at least new to my videos, that is suitable specifically for marine use. I will put links to this in the video description, so if you're interested in this particular filter, please check out the links in the video description and also in the pinned comment. And before we get started, I'll just give you a few notes on this particular filter. It's got an intake at the top, and at the bottom, so it draws from two different places. So the intake at the top acts as a skimmer, and the intake at the bottom sucks in the muck that's actually suspended in the water. According to the manufacturer, it's suitable for aquariums from 60 to 400 litres. Now that is the biggest spread that I have ever seen written on a box. That's massive, 60 to 400 litres. Um, yeah, it's a strange one. And the pump has a variable output from 250 litres to 850 litres. Just to give you those figures in US gallons, the manufacturer says it's suitable for tanks between 15 to 105 US gallons, and the pump pumps out between 70 and 225 US gallons per hour. Now when this came to me, it did actually have something already in the main body. It had a piece of very coarse foam on the top, followed by a great big lump of filter floss. So that was down there, that was on the top. The bottom and the top outlet ultimately combine and tip in the top of the filter. So it's top down filter. Water would hit this first and then go into the floss. So really this was just set up to keep the water clear. Not necessarily healthy because there was no filter media in here. So now that you've seen what did come with it, I can put that away back in the box and we'll get on to how I have set it up. But before we do that, I'm just gonna run through the features of this filter and I'll bring you in for a closer look whilst I'm doing that. Okay, let's take a look at this. That's our outlet, so the pump is in the bottom. That outlet is adjustable so the water will go at different angles. It doesn't move though. Once you set it somewhere, that's it. The water will go out in that particular direction. You can adjust it based on where you want the water to go. So pump in the bottom. This intake in the top acts as a surface skimmer. Water just drops straight into there. And the water that is drawn in through the bottom intake travels up the inside and it comes out of this weir here and drops into the top. So we've got a top down filter. And the area inside of here has a removable cap and into there you can drop a heater up to 75 watts. So you can integrate the heater into the filter. Bottom intake has a removable end there. Presumably you can get extensions that would take that down a little bit further, but this box didn't have any in. Um, I don't think it mentions anything about that, but that would be a nice feature to see. Something that would just extend it a little bit further, you know. And this is the really clever part. You may think, what the hell is a polystyrene doing there? But here we've got two magnets. We've got one attached to the pump, there and there, top and bottom, and the other one is meant to go against the outside of the glass. So this is actually held on magnetically. Attach it on and it would stay solid. No risk of any of those suckers becoming brittle and not holding it. So really, you can add a canny bit of weight to this and still get it suspended on the glass, no problem at all. Now, we don't really have a whole heap of space in here, but I'll just show you what I've put in. We've got a medium pad in the top and then a fine pad underneath. And you're probably thinking, hold on, where's the coarse pad? But I'll show you that in a moment. 
So that is our mechanical filtration, ensuring that the water is clean before it hits a bag of Biogravel Marine. I bet you didn't think, oh, that would fit in there. So we've got approximately 550 grams of Biogravel Marine in there. And I'll just show you a bag of that so you can see the colour of it. This is basically a marine version of our Biogravel. So it's got added trace elements fused into it, which not only give it a different colour, but also make it exceptionally receptive to bacteria. So the bacteria sets up really, really fast in this. It's a porous gravel, so it works exceptionally well. You can pack out very small spaces efficiently with this. And if you're wondering how we get to the pump, we just pop off the front of that and then we're into our pump if we ever need to maintain it or adjust the flow. So just a quick recap. Roughly 550 grams of media. In there. And that green bag actually comes with this. It's lovely and flexible so it just forms itself into the available space in here. And just a quick note on the, the place where the heater goes, that can be removed, but the problem is if you do remove that, the water then doesn't flow from the top down, it, uh, it cocks it up. So that really has to be left, unfortunately, but it will hide our heater if we choose to use one in the top. So media in there, fine pad, medium pad. It's in perfectly just below the lip and we've got the bumpy side up so we've got maximum surface area to catch all the muck there and hopefully extend our cleaning times. So where's the coarse foam? Well, it doesn't come with a coarse foam, as far as I can tell, and the literature doesn't really tell me anything about a coarse foam, but that is a replacement coarse foam from a, what is it called, a fluval edge tank. And I think these also fit on a lot of the hang on the back filters as well. This fits reasonably well onto the intake here. So if you're worried about little fish getting sucked in here by the pump, you can squeeze one of these onto it. And that increases the surface area that the water's being drawn in from, so therefore it reduces the draw. It doesn't affect the output of the pump, you know, it doesn't affect how much water it pumps, but it does affect how quickly the water is drawn in at a certain point by diffusing it. So that goes on the bottom, like so. We've got our coarse foam, medium foam, fine pad, media, pump, back to tank. So that's it set up. Very, very easy one to do indeed. It's quite a well designed filter that one. I like the idea that you can hide the heater in there. I also like the idea that it draws from two different places at once, so you can take scum off the top and muck from further down in the tank, the suspended muck. Um, I really like the idea of a magnetic attachment to the tank because the suckers that generally hold internal filters on don't last forever. You're generally lucky to get about a year out of them before you stick this on the side and it starts sliding down over the period of a day. I'm sure if you've had internal filters you will have experienced that. That stops it happening. And other models of this have a protein skimmer attached, this one that I think regulates water level or something. This one would be classed as the basic one, so that's all we're looking at today. If anybody has one of the more advanced ones, feel free to send it. So the 3162 has been pimped up about as far as it'll go. It's a very simple filter, so the little tweaks that were made to it to upgrade it, again, were very simple. As it only fits about half a kilo in, I would say that this for a marine tank is nearer the 60 litres than the 400 litres if you want to see a decent process of ammonia nitrite nitrate. 400 litres, I mean 400 litre marine tank you're really talking about a sump or two big external filters. You're not going to get much filtration from a little internal filter on a 400 litre tank. That one was short and sweet so if you've enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up. Share it wherever you want, and I shall see you next time. Thanks for watching. Oh, and before I go, I just want to say that the second filter that Andrew sent me is a Eheim. Not a pickup, what, what was it again? Biopower 200. 
It's the one with like the ball shape attachment on the top. I think that actually used to be called Eheim Ball Filters. May have changed the name. I know when I had the shop they were called Ball, as far as I can remember. But in the next video, we'll be taking a look at that one. See you next time.